You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. Hello, I'm Natalie Gruniger, author and host of the podcast Talking Tudors. Katie and Nathan invited me onto their show to let you know that they use strong language on Queen's podcast, so if that's not your cup of tea, this won't be the show for you. However, if you like listening to podcasts about Tudor queens and the 16th century, I think you'll like my show, Talking Tudors. (laughs) (laughs) What? You're hilarious. Like, there's a counter whenever we start to record, and Kate was like, three, two, one, showtime. Well, it is showtime, Nathan. <laughs> but anyway. You know who else was the bomb diggity? Who? Anne of Cleves. <laughs> <laughs> Let's read. Nathan, give us a short recap on what we touched on last time. All right. Um, Anne of Cleves. German mm-hmm. Duchess. Mm-hmm. Lots of people want an alliance with her and her brother, William. Um, and he's quite the brat, too. Yeah, we don't um, love him. Yeah, not not a good look. Um, Henry VIII of England decides that he wants an alliance with them and decides to marry Anne after seeing her beautiful portrait. And it is a beautiful um, portrait. So Anne travels across the world to marry this stanky like stranger, and it's going fine. <laughs> We left off on their wedding night. Um, Stanky Leg Henry and Anne were put to bed. And nothing (laughs) happened. Nothing happened. Yeah. So Anne wouldn't immediately be alarmed by this uh, because it was actually the Epiphany Feast Day, which is a religious holiday. And it's, you know, not uncommon for religious folks not to fuck on Oh, holy days. Yeah. Holidays, holy days. Holy days, holidays. I wonder if that's where it came from. Oh. So it's likely that Anne probably had some anxiety about this not consummating the marriage thing because she may have heard about Catherine of Aragon. Yeah. There's that. But her ladies would have been like, no, 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 no. It was the epiphany. We don't, don't worry about it. And she'd be like, yeah, <laughs> you're right. I'm not going to, I'm not going to sweat this. Yep. But then time went by and. A no boning. It was a no bones day. (laughs) So they shared a bed for like many, many nights in a row and not a zilch. Nothing. Nothing happened. (laughs) If Um, Anne was worried about this, we really just don't know. Yeah. You know, there's really no evidence of whether or not she was alarmed by not boning her husband. Uh, But look, I mean, they were perfect strangers. So... We don't talk about it a whole lot, but it must have been so awkward, like in these royal marriages where you meet the person that you're going to marry like three days before you marry them. There had to be plenty of situations where people took a while to get to know each other. Yeah, for sure. Maybe she just thought we're just taking a minute to get to know each other first, right? Right. Uh, However, unbeknownst to Anne, Henry told his dude Cromwell, ugh. And I liked her a little before. I like her a little less now. And then that got, like, misconstrued. And then he complained to Cromwell that she stinks. uh, Coming from the guy with the stanky leg. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's you, actually. Um, Maybe you are smelling your own leg. (laughs) (laughs) And then he said that her boobs were saggy. Well, if you've got big knockers, they're not going to be like, ping all the time fuck right you. yeah fuck you <laughs> and he said that her belly was saggy too and i'm just like hey henry the eighth have you looked in a fucking mirror lately right <laughs> we're not here to body shame anybody but henry the eighth just look in a fucking mirror before you say these things again pot kettle black <laughs> right but like he took the these things like her having a saggy belly and saggy boobs to be like well i could tell that she wasn't a virgin from that but, but how'd that work how how'd that work how to, i mean i get what he's saying and that like maybe you know when you've had a baby yeah you're or just you've been the women you've married up to this point were petite this is your first curvy lady I think that's, I think it's the latter. Oh like well, no, like, I, de- I definitely don't think she had a baby, yeah, Nathan. She was not <laughs> pregnant. Yeah, I, I feel like people believe that though. Oh, there is definitely there is definitely some people that, and this is a whole other episode, believe 
this rumor that she had had a secret illegitimate child before coming over. No, she just wasn't a stick, which is yeah, fine. Right. She was a curvy she's queen. A, she's a thick girl. We like yeah. her girls. T-H-I-C-C. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, something we'll get into a little bit later down the line. These critiques of Anne's body come from Cromwell when under duress. Like when they're written down, they're under duress. So if you don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, stay tuned. We'll get into that a little bit more later. Yeah, Cromwell. Cromwell was not telling all the truth and nothing but the truth. So help him change. Okay, well, let's, 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 <laughs> that's a little teaser. A little teaser. Let's save that for later. But what we do know is that Anne was ready to embrace her new homeland. Um, And just five days after her wedding, she had already shed her heavy German garments. Um, Mm -hmm. And if you remember from last time, the German style ladies clothes, much, much heavier, much more covered. Yeah, they're covered from head to toe. In the show notes um, that Nathan and I are looking at, I put a picture Side by side, Jane Seymour and Anna Cleves portraits. Because I wanted to show like, yep, today we would consider them both extremely covered up. But look at that neckline on Jane Seymour. Yeah, her neckline. I mean, that neckline goes down to their tatas. The tatas. <laughs> and whereas Anna Cleves was basically in like a turtleneck. I mean, they look gorge. They both look gorge. She probably stepping out in these English style clothing, which was actually French style clothing, would have been a big adjustment for her, but right. she was she was fearless. She did it. She was like, "I want the people of my new country to know I like being here. I'm happy to be here. I accept them." Embracing the culture, right? Yeah, even if it made her feel uncomfortable. And might I just add, with Anna Cleves, um, where's that belly that Henry was talking about? I see a very, very tiny waist. <laughs> waist. <laughs> Fuck you, Henry. In yeah. me. Who? (laughs) Yeah, so she makes her first public outing dressed in English style, which, like I said, was the French style. And everyone was really impressed by her efforts. They were like, okay, okay. Look who's like, I mean, five days in. That's pretty quick. Trying to acclimate. She had already been doing all these other steps to make sure that she acclimates to the culture. She was the people's princess. She was the people's Mm -hmm. queen and the people loved that she was trying to be one of them. Yeah, she loved them for loving her and they loved her for loving them and they and all love each other. That's showbiz kid. And that's showbiz kid. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> and from their wedding in January until March or so, for the most part, everything is fine. Fine. You know, I, feel like this is, I feel like that's like her recurring theme. Yeah. <laughs> um, so her and Henry didn't appear to have really good chemistry though. Um, But again, I think, you know, Anne's just thinking we're brand new at this. This is a brand new marriage. Uh, It'll come later, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And in public, they were actually, no one knew anything was remiss. And I don't think Anne knew anything was remiss either, you know? Yeah. And Henry, I mean, we do have to note that Henry hadn't married a woman that he didn't know. At this point, this would have been the first chick that he never met. And which was commonplace for most kings is, Mm -hmm. you know, you married a basic stranger for an alliance. Catherine of Aragon, he grew up with, basically. Mm -hmm. He knew her for like seven or eight years before they got married. And then Anne Boleyn, obviously. Jane Seymour. Also, mm-hmm. he actually, he chose her as well. So this is the first time he's having to deal with what most <laughs> nobility do in these arranged do, marriages. Yeah, for sure. He didn't like it. I mean, I wouldn't like it, but also I'm not a Renaissance king. So... Spoiler um, alert. Um, spoiler okay. alert. In case you thought I might be a king from the 1500s, I am not. <laughs> <laughs> so there is this one story that gives us a real good glimpse into Anne's personality. And it turns out she's a hard headed bitch. And I love yeah. this for her. I love um, it. I know I, I, from one hard headed bitch to another. Um, we love a hard headed bitch over here. Cause we are both Mwah. one of them. Yes. <laughs> so Henry wanted Anne to meet his daughter from his marriage to Catherine of Aragon, you know, Mary the first. 
yeah. ABD. Yeah. Um, and Mary at this point is illegitimate, quote unquote. Um, and y'all, I don't, I don't think Anne understood this arrangement <laughs> at all. Because to her, if someone's saying, oh, this is the king's illegitimate daughter. Why am I meeting this bastard, right? No one, but like Mary Tudor, Mary the first situation was so unique in the world. It's like, okay, yes, yes, she's an illegitimate daughter, but she's also still kind of a princess. (laughs) Yeah, and her mom was kind of the queen and they kind of had a baby together. It's like, okay, we all have to say that she's illegitimate to make um, the big man happy. But uh, she's still like basically a prince. Like, just <laughs> no one explained it. She didn't get it. She didn't uh-huh. get it. And to be fair, wouldn't you be confused by that situation as well? Yeah, yeah, I would too. Like, she didn't get it. And this is the first time that we really saw how strong willed she was. I think it really did take some balls for young Anne to literally stand up to Henry and stand up for herself when she thought that she was being disrespected understand how she must have thought she was being disrespected because it Mm -hmm. just wasn't her culture well first of all it wasn't normal anywhere anywhere this is is a very odd situation going on here which is why we're still talking about it so commonly 600 years later or whatever (laughs) but it was a weird situation yeah and so she's like i don't want to meet your illegitimate daughter and i i guess somebody eventually took her aside and was like no, this is a different but situation. Do that. Uh, um, cu- because her and Mary end up becoming very, very close. Mary was only like not even a year younger than Anne. Yo, I know. Yo, I know. Yo. They ended up having a very, very close friendship for the rest of their lives. So I guess she got over it. Not much of a choice there. You got to get over it, uh, or else she's going to kill you. Uh, yay. <laughs> Uh, this is fine. This is fine. <laughs> no, it's not. Um, anyway, let's uh, circle back. So in March, Brother William, Duke of Cleves, starts shit with the Holy Roman Emperor Charles. State of mind. Yes. Uh, and William immediately looks over to his new brother-in-law, Henry, and it's like, hey, bro, say, bro, what you say, boy? I need an army. I need an army. I need some troops. I need armor. I need money, 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 (laughs) money. And then Henry's like, wait. Oh, what the fuck? What? Uh What? Excuse me? Excuse me, what? (laughs) He's not trying to be in a war against the Holy Roman Emperor. Because we also have to remember that the Holy Roman Emperor, um, Charles V at this time, is also basically like the King of Spain as well. Mm -hmm. I ew, I'm not trying to be in a war against someone so rich and so powerful. And he kind of was like, it feels like you waited to start this shit with the Holy Roman Emperor for this marriage. Like you waited right. until we were in an alliance to start this. And I did not sign up for that. Right. I, th- this I don't really blame him for. Right. How happy are you that you never have to worry about um, your... I, I never have to worry that my brother and husband are ever going to go to war. Yeah, yeah. I don't have a husband, but that would, that would be a nice, not nice thing not to go to war. It's a problem that she endured that I will never have to worry about. So it, I'm jealous that she had castles, but I'm very happy <laughs> that my neither my husband or my brother can ever start a war to begin with. And they're never going to go to war together because it's awkward turtle awkward yep. turtle that's yep. what i'm doing right now guys yep. <laughs> uh, so also around this time a lot of Anne's german crew packing up and going home yep. um some stayed with her but not all of them uh one girl that was assigned as one of her english ladies in waiting was the very young niece of the duke of norfolk um a girl named Catherine howard <sighs> <sighs> you know who else was a uh, beautiful niece of the Duke of Norfolk? Uh, Anne Boleyn. Oh. Mm. So this, this is not an accident. Crazy. This is, yeah. uh, the Duke of Norfolk is just kind of like. Want to fuck oh, my niece. Want to fuck my niece? Yeah, basically. <laughs> basically, he's like, oh, you know what happened last time? I got really powerful when you wanted to fuck my other niece. 
So here, I got this other super hot niece. You want to fuck her? And Henry was like, <laughs> he knew Henry's type. I mean, what, 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 can, I, can, can I just, why wouldn't you stop after your last niece's head got cut off? And I mean, his nephew, because <laughs> George Boleyn as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Why, why, stop. <laughs> no fucking nieces anymore. <laughs> Can't stop, won't stop. Please fuck my niece. <laughs> But no, he did it with Mary Boleyn, who was Henry's mistress before Anne, and then Anne Boleyn. And so this is the third time that he's been like, I got a hot niece. You want to fuck him? Um, <laughs> like it, and it works for him very well because they get their heads cut off, but uh, he just gets rich. So it's fine. It wasn't an accident that Catherine Howard ended up being a lady in waiting for Anne of Cleves. The Duke of Norfolk was specifically like, oh, I see a crack in the foundation here. Let me put my hot niece here. And it worked. <laughs> again. 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 <laughs> fuck, my, fuck my niece again. again. Sweet my third niece that you fuck. She might get her head cut off again. Oh, again. <laughs> Oh, foreshadowing <laughs> we're going to hell yeah <laughs> so we don't want to go into uh, to Catherine howard too too much here guys um uh, because i think anna cleaves would be a little, a little bit pissed well just like in Catherine of aragon's episode we didn't talk about anne boleyn too much and anne boleyn's episode yeah. we didn't talk about jane seymour too much so skip ahead <laughs> Yeah, they're all going to get their own story. Yeah. But it seems pretty likely that Anne noticed that Henry was paying a lot more attention to his ladies in waiting and was like, <laughs> um, oh. He's like barely paying attention to me. Why is he looking at this Howard chick so much? So, like, I have to wonder if she had been given a heads up that, like, English people keep mistresses because i don't it doesn't seem like from like doesn't seem like her parents stepped out on their marriage yeah she wasn't prepared and so maybe her ladies were like hey look that's a thing here people step men step out on their marriages and you just kind of roll with it you know well i mean i feel like she would know though right because she would have heard about french kings and right because didn't everybody have mistresses like that was just a normal well, if her parents didn't, and remember, she grew up very, very sheltered. She didn't see a lot of the outside world. I don't know. Touche. Anyway. That's French for yes, touch. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> All the way up until May, it seems like Anne just didn't feel like she had anything to worry about, really. Like, no, they weren't having sex, but they'll get to it eventually. They're not in a rush. The people really seemed to like her, so that was good. She was acclimating to her new country. That was good. Nothing to worry about. Everyone outside of the inner circle in the country as well, also, and not not the inner her inner circle, Henry's inner circle knew that he was like, Meh. That's a direct quote. That's a direct quote from the public. <laughs> <laughs> but that conflict with Anne's brother and the Holy Roman Emperor was just like driving a wedge between this couple. And I don't know how aware she was of that. Yeah. And Henry at this point is becoming more and more infatuated with his teen brag. His teenage mission. Because Catherine Howard was like 15, teenage 16. Teenage wasteland. <laughs> yeah. oh. I don't like it. I don't like it, David. Yeah. And the more that her brother demanded funds uh, for his war, the more Henry fell in love with Catherine Howard. Mm. That's when Henry was really like, I never wanted to be in this marriage to begin with. And that's when things got serious. So I think it's really interesting that the common belief is that Henry was like, OMG, I have to divorce this woman right away because she's so fucking ugly. Yeah, but people never talk about the political stuff that was going on. Yeah, exactly. It, it really seems like while he was never in love with Anne of Cleves, the move to get the marriage annulled had more to do with not wanting to spend a lot of money to go to war. <laughs> Which, same. War, what is it good for? Absolutely, Absolutely nothing. So you're good, you know. <laughs> And yeah, Catherine Howard was part of it, but I feel like people play up the, oh, she was so ugly and the beautiful mistress 
thing more than it was actually, um, you know, it just makes for a better Showtime. Drama. Yeah. <laughs> Three, two, one, Showtime. <laughs> So in June 1540, about five months after their wedding, Henry Zoo comes up to Anne and, and they're like, hey, uh, so the plague and, you know, ye old sweating sickness. Uh, this is a whole thing here in the summer. Um, so as a precaution, we're going to send you out of the country uh, to this place called Richmond Palace. Yes. Um, if Anne asked why her husband wasn't coming with her, it's really not noted at this point. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if she's suspicious or not at this point. So right. as soon as she was out of town, Henry's crew hit the ground running on ways to get him out of this marriage. Marriage is what brings us together today. <laughs> around this time thomas cromwell had actually been arrested and charged with treason treason also his head uh, yeah uh-huh um, <laughs> on june 10th he was arrested and taken to the tower of london basically henry was like you got me into this alliance without doing your due fucking diligence i'm pretty eager to cut off everybody's heads um, he loved cutting heads off in case you didn't know. That's a spoiler. Favorite but... pastime. And so he was like, you got me into this alliance without doing your due diligence. I don't, I didn't really want to be in this marriage. You pushed it. And the Duke of Norfolk was whispering in his ear being like, he did this because he hates you. He did this because he wants to ruin this country. This um, Duke needs to shut the fuck up. <laughs> Thomas Cromwell isn't always a um, sympathetic character, but I do feel bad for him. I really do think he wasn't, he didn't have any ulterior motives in this one thing. I don't feel bad for him because he is the reason that Anne Boleyn got her head cut off, but I do feel bad for him. Agreed. Agreed. I I don't think it was called for, for all of this bullshit, but this, at this point, Henry is just so paranoid. Yes. He has lost his mind and he's ready to believe anything, any conspiracy theory, like QAnon, sign him up. While Cromwell was in jail, he was asked to provide a detailed report of like what Henry said about his relationship with Anne of Cleves. Mm-hmm. All of these things that we know where they come from is this report that Thomas Cromwell provided while in the Tower of London being charged with treason. So, of course, he's going to say whatever he can to get out of, um, you know, the Tower of London of it all. You know what I mean? Yeah, the Tower of London of it all. I mean, we yeah. we, we told you we were going to circle back to this dress yes! that Thomas Cromwell was under. And here we are. Ha! Ah! <laughs> detailed account was number one henry didn't want to marry anne in the first place mm-hmm. number two that he didn't he believed her to not be free to marry and forced him into the marriage anyway mm-hmm. and number three they never consummated the marriage right so wham bam thank you ma'am three strikes you're out and that's where we get like thomas cromwell's report there is where we get the like ooh, she smells her boobs are saggy her Belly's big. Okay, okay, okay. This is like the 15th century. So 16th century? Wait, 15th century. 16th century. Um, Everybody smells. Yes. You all smell horrible. Deodorant <laughs> has not been invented and soap is expensive. So you, first of all, you all smell bad. But this comes from a man being charged with treason sitting in the Tower of London. Yeah. And this is where we get all these famous reports of her mm-hmm. being ugly. And this mm-hmm. is literally where it all comes from. So uh, don't think it's true. Because um, uh, the guy that painted her portrait would not have painted an inaccurate portrait. Right. And her portrait is very pretty. And whereas the guy sitting in the Tower of London thinking maybe if I make her sound unfuckable enough, it'll save my life. Yeah. That, there's he's a more likely He's more likely to fib a little bit there. We got the motive here, Katie. Shane. Is she? <laughs> all right. So now that we know where that all comes from, we're going to let you guys marinate on that. And we're going to take a quick break to refill our drinks. Mm-hmm. 
And we're back. So let's talk about like at least one nice thing in this retelling um, from a very scared Thomas Cromwell that Anne supposed or that Henry supposedly said about Anne supposedly after like their first night together when Henry was like, I don't like her. Cromwell was like, but she does have a, a queenly manner about her. Right. And he, and Henry was like, yeah, right. I, I like, I, I feel like that's something that people say about me quite frequently. That you have a queenly manner. Yeah. But for a different reason, maybe. Oh, I didn't think about that. Katie. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so i mean i guess it's like one nice thing he said you usually hear about like okay why did henry the eighth divorce anne of cleves and all you ugly. hear ugly 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 there seems to be a lot of other factors in play here thomas cromwell who was like on death's door even made sure to like go out of his way to be like but she's really cool <laughs> <laughs> You know, I think that is really, really interesting, don't you? Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> because he could have just been a complete dick and been yeah. like, yeah, she she was never fit to be a queen. She was never meant to do this. She's a fucking peasant commoner. She had been brought up in this hugely conservative household that, you know, taught her how to be a queen. So, of course, she had a queenly manner. Fuck you, Henry. Yeah. Um, she also is gorgeous and smells like a bed of roses. I, I'm sure compared <laughs> to him, I'm sure she does. <laughs> Uh, about a month later, Anne has been sitting in Richmond. She doesn't know that Henry is hardcore looking into a divorce at this point. But she's got some feelers out there. It's like, eh, something's not quite right now. Mm-hmm. Her brother, sisters, and mom are writing her from back about the impending war and probably asking her, like, uh, when's your husband going to send some troops? Yo, money, money, money. Money, money, uh, money. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, uh, he just hasn't mentioned anything yet about this shit. Um, so I don't know. Eh, eh, not good. Your family back home is asking for money and being like, you are responsible for this. And it's just being like, I have, I'm so new. I am brand new. I don't, I cannot help you with this. New world. Um, <laughs> and so Henry's dudes show up at her palace in Richmond and are like, hey, we have news. You're not going to like it. <laughs> the king wants an annulment and we're like, he's close to getting it and we need your consent to go forward. It was more of a courtesy than anything else that they were doing this. And then Anne floored, floored, gooped. Some people say that she screamed. Some people say that she passed out. But I, I get that. Like, when you're so surprised by something like that, I feel like an emotion you have no control over is normal. Exactly. No, agreed. There yeah. is no uh, norm when you're emotional. It's trauma. Um, it's And also, have you ever watched... I don't think you've watched the full series, The Tudors. Mm-hmm. So, Joss Stone plays Anne of Cleves. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, huh. you know famously super ugly Joss Stone. Um, yeah, no, she's hideous. Gorgeous and beautiful and sings like an angel. But she does such a great job. The scene when they tell her, like, the king wants a divorce. And she's just like, is he going to cut my head off? Obviously, we have no idea what her internal dialogue was. But Got to cross your mind. She knows what's happened with Anne Boleyn. It would be a natural reaction to be like, is he going to cut my head off? So that... When I was researching this, that scene, I know it's a fictional show and highly dramatized and a lot of critics don't love it, but that scene kept popping up in my head where she's just like, but am I going to die? Is this like how that starts? I think that is a natural reaction. I honestly think that anybody would have felt that way in her shoes. Yeah. And no one in her family had ever gotten a divorce or an annulment or anything but she had no idea what's going on. But can you imagine, like, the range of emotions that she was feeling? Like, mm-hmm. like you just said, not only is it like, I'm going to lose, am I, am I going to die? Um, it's like, you lost your husband. What's going to happen? Are they going to send you back? Family going to say? What, what is he going to do to my family? What, the, what is next for me? Mm-hmm. I feel so much, like, sympathy for her. In those few months there, like trying to figure out what's next for me. Okay, so let's fast forward. And and 
basically Anne's like, okay, whatever, whatever you want, just don't chop off my head, okay? Yeah. Um, and so she wrote Henry this letter that's just like, OMG, you're so right. I would love to be your sister, hence the cocktail that I made. You divorce me. You agree to this divorce. You're going to be my sister now, which is weird, but. Yeah, because nobody wants to bone their sister. Um, right. I mean, except like Cleopatra's descendants. They probably would have fucked their sister. Um Yeah. <laughs> I just need to take a screenshot of Katie's face right now <laughs> and make it its own Jill. Yeah. <laughs> so she sends back her wedding ring and tells him, smash it into pieces because it's meaningless and they were never really married anyway. This is so emo and I'm here for it. She has been so extra. Like, it's so please don't chop off my head energy, you know, like mm-hmm. just please don't whatever you want. Yeah. Just, just a little bit of caffeine and desperation. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get it though. Like she's being extra, but I totally fucking get it. Like what happens whenever you oppose Henry VIII? Uh, you got I- your head cut off. So since, you know, I've been here seeing his number one dude get arrested for treason, why am I going to fight this? Like, right. just accept it and roll with the punches, which I am here for. This is why I love you, Anna, please, is you like, look, you read the room. She read the room and she assessed the situation and then she was over the top with like, yes, you know what? We were never married. I'll be your sister. Cool. Sounds like another famous retelling that you guys have probably heard is that her ladies in waiting gave a statement where they were like, well, have you had sex? Have you slept with the king or whatever? And she responds something like, he kisses me at bedtime and tells me good night. And he kisses me in the morning and tells me good morning and wishes me good day. Isn't that enough? Because of that, she kind of became, it kind of became a bit of a joke of like, oh, how naive is Anna Cleves. And Nathan, you and I have discussed this over on Patreon. She knew where babies came from, right? Yes, she absolutely knew where babies came from. I mean, this would have been something that she would have been raised with. Yes, she was raised very, very sheltered, but also she was raised in a place where it was all women. And sometimes Mm -hmm. that meant pregnant women. And sometimes that meant women giving birth. Yes. Yes, she had a very basic education but you know what's pretty basic in life uh yoga pants and pumpkin spice lattes yes but also reproduction (laughs) different kind of basic different kind of basic maven so she would have known where babies come from so there's several so anyone that's like oh she was just so naive no i think maybe she was embarrassed that her and the king hadn't fucked yet so she kind of played coy on our Patreon interview that we did with Heather Darcy, who wrote the book. Uh, shout out, bad shout bitch, out. Heather Darcy. Oh my God, <laughs> love her. But in that Patreon episode interview, we asked her about this. And she thinks Anne was being sarcastic. And just like mm-hmm. her ladies didn't get it. Where she was like, oh, isn't that enough? Like, how dare you fucking ask me about my sex life? Like, I mean, it totally makes sense because that's something that Katie, I don't ask you about your sex life. Like, thank you. That's yes. This is not something that I want to know about. And if you did, I would probably (laughs) give you a really fucking sarcastic answer. Like, oh no, he kisses me in the morning. Isn't that sex? You know. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I love it. So anyway, either way, the the cookie crumbles. Mm -hmm. Um, Henry's annulment granted. Uh, on the grounds that Anne was actually already married to the Duke of Lorraine. So uh, this is such bullshit, Henry. Uh. So soon after, the Duke of Lorraine's son marries Christina of Denmark, who we had talked about before. And Henry actually told all his ambassadors who were like placed in Europe that were invited to the wedding that they couldn't go because it would undermine this annulment. It was like, you can't go to the Duke of Lorraine's son's wedding because it's going to validate that it's a real wedding. And obviously, oh we God. all know it's a sham because he's married to Anne of Cleves. <laughs> oh God, this dude, I cannot even stand him. This fucking guy. <laughs> 
on July 9th of 1540, six months and two days after she became the Queen of England, she officially became unqueened. Unqueened. <laughs> That's like the opposite of our podcast, Unqueened Podcast. But unlike when Catherine of Aragon was unqueened, um, Anne was showered with gifts for agreeing. You know, she's like, I mean, Henry's last divorce was a little messy. Um, <laughs> yeah. So Which the fact one? She, yeah, the fact that she took this and was like, okay, I'm just going to deal with it. He was like, hey, I'm going to give you money and prizes. And jewels and, and palaces. You're and entered into the raffle. One thing that I found really, really interesting that was different. Catherine of Aragon, we know that she got to be present at the trial about their annulment. Because if you remember, uh, Queen's Podcast Classic. He had classic, the drama speech mama. <laughs> Nathan did a reenactment of the drama speech mama, and it was fantastic. <laughs> but it but it turned a lot of people against Henry. Uh-huh. And then Anne Boleyn got to defend herself as well at her trial. Everything about that was bad for everybody. <laughs> Anne of Cleves was never given the chance to have representation like it doesn't move the story forward or anything i just think that's sad and fucked up yeah totally sad and fucked up she had no voice no say in anything so i mean of course she had to take it and just she didn't, she didn't feel supported it. she didn't feel like she had another no, voice. there was no yeah. way there was no way but now she's rich bitch yeah she's a rich divorcee she's going on uh the next bar hop tour and you know picking up some milk <laughs> Um, <laughs> Henry gave her castles. I, I, don't know. I mean, it sounds like I want a castle. But, you want to um, divorce me and give me a castle? Sounds good. Yeah, <laughs> she got castles. She got jewels. Most famously, the castle that she loved the most, and it was like her primary residence for the next few years, was Richmond Castle. And she was also this is such a weird shade. She was given Hever Castle, which is where. Anne Boleyn grew up. That is a weird shade. That's right. a very weird shade. Like, wait, right. Anne Boleyn? Like, mer? the one who is hen? You got, maybe it was like. I would remember. Expect- don't fuck with me. <laughs> yeah, right. I would. That's probably what happened. Um, but I, I mean, I would see more irony if he gave her Catherine of Aragon's old castle. You know what I mean? Like, because that's the divorced wife. Yeah. So he's the divorced wife, the divorced wife castle. So it's like ye old divorcee castle. (laughs) He also gave her an income, which usually women in England at this time to get an income, not attached to like what your husband was giving you. You had to be a, um, widow so the fact that she wasn't a widow and she had like this steady income independent of her marital status really coming to her ah, that's pretty cool yeah no totally cool totally cool but the stipulation was she couldn't she couldn't leave england yeah because it's like it would be way more expensive for him to send her all the way back to cleves and also while she's in england he also could have her as like a bargaining chip don't you start know. a war with England because your sister's here. Mm-hmm. But her mm-hmm. brother was a dick anyway, so I don't think yeah. he would have cared. Like, I don't let's be love real. Love him, no. Yeah. So people debate why she stayed in England. So, Katie, what do you think? Well, there's the autonomy. If she had gone back to Cleves, um, she would have to live in her brother's household. And in England, she's got her own house household she's got several of her own households so there's she's one got Anne Boleyn's castle she's got Anne Boleyn's castle also I think she genuinely liked England I think there's a reason why she adopted the culture so quickly yeah. you know and that she came around so quickly was because I think she was like oh these people are cool they like pubs they like fish and chips let's go <laughs> I like pubs I like fish and chips <laughs> <laughs> I honestly think that there was so much war dicking going on, you know, with the Holy Roman Emperor, with her brother, and there's so much fucking fighting that she felt safe, right? Like, she felt okay. She's like, all right, if I go back home, 
I could be kidnapped. I could be murdered. I could be sold off. Yes, we talked about that in the last episode. We compared her to Eleanor of Aquitaine, where it's like, while she was traveling, she was very nervous about getting kidnapped. Mm -hmm. So if she went back to Cleves while Cleves was at war with the the Empire, while the Empire was striking Mm -hmm. back... (laughs) <laughs> I love the Star Wars reference. <laughs> I have never seen a Star Wars film. I, yeah, you them. Them. But I love you, Kate. Um, I, I love you for loving me and loving everybody. <laughs> oh, that's Showbiz Kid. That's Showbiz Kid. No time. <laughs> You're very right. She could have been kidnapped in a situation like that. So why not just stay put in the mini castles? She lay low, man. Like, th- I think throughout all of this bullshit, she lay low and was like, all right, I, I can fight with the King of England, or I could get a castle. Or I can get a castle. Um, I could stay in England or get kidnapped. Stay in England. Um, so it's like I she, could be my own person or go live under the rule of my brother. Be my own person. Uh, be, be independent. Yeah, yeah. Like all the women who are independent, throw your hands up at that. One thing that I think is kind of interesting is she started like a side hustle. She started selling beer and learning about I, like how to make beer and i'm, I'm in love i know <laughs> like love. the records her like receipts or whatever show that she bought like so 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 much beer and so the assumption is that she had bought it as, to sell it and started learning how to people make beer and kind of had a little side hustle i love that <laughs> her own personal heine can she had this autonomy but also sadly she was still kind of a prisoner you know yeah she was for quite some time and henry made her send all her letters that she wrote to her mom sisters brothers so that he could like proofread them aka he's paranoid guys like he's got the stanky leg and it has infected his brain it really is real Let's be real. That's actually a theory a lot of people have, is that... Yeah, that's always been my theory, has it has been that he got that infection in his leg, and it gave him a brain infection, and he went psychotic. She, she had to send any of her letters that she sent home, or any letters she got from home, had to go through Henry's dudes first. But, because we love a sneaky bitch, it's almost certain that she was, like, hiding letters and like books or whatever and then giving to somebody that was like in her inner circle who then would send them without but then also sending letters that she for went Henry to shady to... lady university katie she I went to shady that. lady university and i am loving it. yeah like you're gonna try to proofread all my letters to my mom no nope. um so during this time Henry ends up marrying his side piece, uh, her former lady in waiting, Catherine Howard. And Henry marries Catherine just three weeks after the divorce. This isn't the first time that he's married somebody way too quickly. Serial monogamist, for sure. Yeah. He is a serial monogamist where it's like, bro, bro, you can't be single for more than a year. Literally. Mm -hmm. He wasn't good at it. No. Mm Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Also, on the day that he married Catherine Howard, uh, Thomas Cromwell was executed. Yeah, despite the fact that he called her ugly, so he tried to get his head not cut off, but but he still got his <laughs> head cut off. Work, bitch. Like I imagine that was a very busy day at court. Like I imagine people that attended both events had to go home and change clothes. Because like, what <laughs> can you wear that is appropriate for a wedding and an execution? You know, a wrap like, dress. A wrap dress. That is, a wrap dress. You're you're <laughs> absolutely right. Diane Bern Fistenberg was there. <laughs> wow. Wow. <Nathan. laughs> we don't know what Anne wore because she stayed her ass home that day. A wrap dress. She wore a moo. <laughs> she wore her slippers because she stayed home. <laughs> she was like, I don't <laughs> want anything she to do with home. either of this shit. <laughs> So again, she's laying low. Um, that's kind of her game. Uh, she got low, 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 low. Yes. But she is officially on the king's records as her sister. Like that's his sister. Sorry. That's her new title. King's sister. That is where she stands. 
yes. in life, which is eh, nice work if you can get it. <laughs> so she's obviously welcome at court anytime because she's now the king's sister. sister. Easter. <laughs> um, and when the holidays rolled around, she's like, fuck, this being at home alone sucks. Ah! Sorry, I had to do a home alone reference. <laughs> uh, she's going to court. She's like, I'm going to court. And New Year's Day, 1541, is her first public appearance um, since the annulment. And kind of ironic because that's the year to the day. That she had that horrible meet and greet with Harry try, Henry yes! trying to be the commoner. Y'all, when Catherine Howard found out that she was coming to court for New Year's, she freaked out. She didn't know what to do. She was like, this is going to be awkward schmawkward. This is going to be awkward turtle making babies all over the place. Like, what? This was a first also. This was the first time that a previous queen was coming to Christmas and hanging or coming to New Year's and hanging out with the new queen. Nobody really knew what to do. Could you imagine like her Christmas cards that she sent out with probably like middle fingers up? Like fingers you. Up. <laughs> Tell them, boy, bye. Boy, bye. <laughs> there was this German tradition, the German nobility, and she and her sisters practiced. Where it's like you tried to one up each other with your Christmas gifts, or just like any kind of gifts, any kind of gift giving situation. Where it'd be like, "Oh, I got you a ring. Oh, that's cute. Well, I got you a whole set ring, earring, necklace. Oh, well, that's cute. Well, I got you this horse with a matching." set oh well that's God. cute well i got you a carriage with the Dick matching waving. set they were just always trying to one up each other and so that's what ann did when she came to chris or to new year's which was also to celebrate the whole holiday season all in all mm -hmm. with the new queen so ann is presented to Catherine howard and throws herself to her knees and is just like OMG, Your Grace, I am not worthy to be in your presence. You are the most beautiful person I've ever laid eyes on, and I am so honored to be here today. <laughs> Catherine Howard is just like, what are you doing? Like, Why do you have that accent? Get <laughs> up! Like, she was so <laughs> uncomfortable by this like overwhelming sh show of devotion, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. She's like, uh, please get the fuck up and please quit doing whatever you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> and Anne brought all kinds of gifts for Catherine, which she was not prepared for. Mm -mm. Um, she ended up giving Anne two puppies and, and that had actually been given to her by Henry. A uh, re-gifting situation that I'm pretty sure Katie would be here for. Like, I Well, one, I guess, please give me the puppies. I will take the puppies you don't want. But it also just kind of showed that, like, in at least Anne's mind, she won the gifting situation because she came with gifts and Catherine had to re-gift. So mm -hmm. at least in Anne's mind, she definitely won that, <laughs> that situation. Yeah. After the initial awkwardness faded, it was actually a really fun, like family reunion, wow. <laughs> very weird family reunion, but it was, um, they had a great visit, you know? Yeah, Catherine and her really got along. Like, yeah. there was no, like, issues there. And got and along with everybody. The, no yeah. one at any point was ever like, oh, what a bitch. Like, she got along with everybody. Yeah, and they ended up staying up all night and partying after Henry went to bed, which, I'm a bitch. Because um, he's old. <laughs> yeah, like, his stanky leg needs a draining. Oh, um, so gross. <laughs> So she and Henry actually exchanged gifts, which gives us an indication that, again, they're on good terms. Yeah. And, it. and um, it was very visible. It was a very visible visit. So everyone at court could be like, oh, wow. Look, basically, they were like, she's such a good sport. <laughs> no. <laughs> So having all this money to give these extravagant gifts. Like, um, she's just not harboring any bad feelings. No, no. But it was a great PR move on Anne's side. Yeah, she had a good PR rep. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so fast forward again. <laughs> uh, and Henry is single. Again. again. 
Catherine Howard has a huge downfall, and after about a year and a half of marriage, she was executed. Surprise. She was executed on February 13th, which is actually my wedding anniversary, so, aww. (laughs) Question mark? (laughs) Honestly, everyone thought that Henry and Anne would get remarried. Like, that's just... Both in England and overseas, everyone just thought, oh, he's he's going to remarry Anne. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, Because once again, the tables had turned and he once again, again, really needed an ally in Europe. France, Scotland had allies and they were both notoriously not fans of England. I don't know Mm -hmm. if you've ever heard of that drama, but let me tell you. It's a whole thing. France and Scotland do not like England historically. And so once they, once their powers combined, he's going to need. They are Captain Planet. They are. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) We're a planeteer. (laughs) You can be one too. Condorcing your life is the thing to do. (laughs) Looting and polluting is not the way. Just cut her head off anyway. Just cut her head off it. I am Captain I think, I think, we, have a, I think we have a new Henry yeah. VIII tagline. Absolutely. Oh. Captain Asshole <laughs> in the way. <laughs> so it seems like Anne, you know, kind of thought they were going to get remarried too. And was really hoping, you know, fingers crossed, maybe this this could happen. She and Henry had a really great friendship based on, you know, their relationship at this point. Was she ever in love with him? No. It is. Um, But they got along really well. And being queen sounds kind of awesome. It's got a nice ring to it, you know? Yeah, Queen Queen Nathan. Queen of Hearts Nathan. Yes. I am here for it. Fun fact, (laughs) while she was... That for that six month period when she was Queen of England, she would write to her sisters and brother and just sort of be like, kind of like how we talked about how they would one up each other teasingly with gifts. Apparently, they would do that, she would do the same thing in her letters to them, being like, Oh, but are you a queen? No, well, last time I checked, Queen Trump's Duchess, Queen Trump's Duke, so. LOL. So, there was probably also an element to that where she like wanted to get back her status so she could continue that with her family dynamic which is petty and i'm here for it i would i love it i I love love it it. Uh, now she's eating some serious crow so i think she wanted to be queen again mainly out of spite maybe maybe and i'm okay with that (laughs) <laughs> but despite despite um the pressure henry was I see what you did there. To, yeah yeah you see that um henry was getting to remarry and ha- he had no interest in getting remarried yeah. no negative yeah. uh i mean he would have to admit that he was uh, hold on uh, uh, wrong <laughs> Are you okay? Are you okay, I, King I, Henry? Uh, or did you, or did it nearly kill you to admit that you were wrong? Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're right. He would have to admit the whole annulment thing was a misstep. So he was never in a million years going to do that. Yeah, but at least he had the balls to come to her home and tell her in person. You know, he didn't send a messenger to do this bullshit. Which, I mean... I thought shows a level of respect that I don't think we normally see from Henry VIII. No. He didn't tell not. Anne Boleyn in person, hey, I'm having your head cut off. You know, he had other <laughs> people. imagine? <laughs> he hid away and had other people tell her. Mm-hmm. But with um, Anna Cleves, he came to tell her personally, like, hey, I'm, I know the rumors and they're not true. Sorry. Yeah. About it, you know? Yeah. It's like, don't start no shit. There won't be no shit. And he yeah. just didn't want to start any shit with her. And I honestly think that that thought like shows the level of respect that he had I for agree. her. Which I agree. Very, very uncommon for him. It didn't stop the rumors though. He, he stopped the rumors with her letting her know it's not going to happen, but still all over Europe and England, people were like, Oh, he's going to remarry Anne. Oh, yeah. I'm sure he was in the tabloids and it was like, is he fucking her again? (gasps) 
Oh, oh my God. So many people thought that. Um, to the point where Anne even got wedding gifts from like their allies over on the continent being like, congratulations, congratulations on your wedding, your upcoming wedding. Here's some gifts. And she's like, it's not happening. y'all. That's, yeah. how, that's how serious these rumors were. People actually thought it was happening. And like everyone and their mother is whispering about these rumors at this yeah. point. And they're even saying that Anne is pregnant. Um, yes. Look, 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 look. Love a good gossip story. Love I it. love it. I'm here for it. This is something in historical fiction books. Very entertaining. But did it actually happen? <laughs> no. 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 There's there's this whole big conspiracy that Anne gave birth to an illegitimate child. But I'm just like, I feel like if she had an illegitimate child, she would have leveraged that for remerit and like. No, no, no. Yeah. End of conspiracy. No. Right. So after Henry married Catherine Parr, Anne pretty bummed out at this point. Yeah. So she experienced some bad health, maybe some mental health issues, a little depression. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've I've been there. Then she got some news that her mother was very, very ill. So she wanted to go home. But Cleves was in like a million different battles and it was simply way too dangerous. That year... Her mother died and her brother lost like half of his land holdings. So like Cleves has gone from this very, very powerful and rich duchy to like not so much, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh. That I'm I'm sure the blow of not requeening <laughs> her mother's death and the news of your homeland. It took a it took a toll on her health and like can I feel like that's the most relatable thing in the world. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If if my family lost everything, I would kind of be a little depressed. I hate this story for her. So in January of 1547, seven years after Anne arrived in England, Henry VIII goes kaput. Um he did. I tell he you did. he did. Thank God. Um <laughs> sorry. <laughs> if anybody likes Henry VIII. You're you're alone. Um. (laughs) and things took a turn for Anne at that point um the nine-year-old Edward is now king and he's like uh is she not my real aunt Um, babies don't need jobs direct quote babies don't need jobs um actually Edward probably really liked and adored Anne and did think of her as his like real aunt but since he's nine years old um babies can't have jobs He's not really calling the shots. And so they cut her income drastically. Like she was getting she was she was getting a very, very comfortable income. And they just like nixed it like nope. I mean, she still lived in castles, but f- like how do you maintain those castles without the money to pay the staff? Without the money to keep the grounds up. Like you can't, you need money to keep an illustrious life going on. And she wasn't getting that. And that, that sucks. Yeah. It's the type of poor that us real poors people don't really understand. Never going to understand royal poor. No. That's another song that we need to release. Never going to understand royal poor. Living in their castles, but they're poor. He's so sad with all of his money. Oh. (laughs) But I could understand for Anne, who had never understood balancing a checkbook, you know, like this would be a level of distress for her, right? Uh, greed. Like, Anne kind of got the memo that this new regime wasn't like really into her. So she lay low again. The girl of laying low. (laughs) She's good at reading the room. Yes. Like, this is her speciality. Yes. Um, She moved into Hebo Castle. But she didn't have to lay low for too, too long after this because Edward VI died again. He only died once. He only died once. (laughs) Just Um, the once. (laughs) Before long, her friend and ex-stepdaughter, Mary, was queen. And she and Mary really super close. And I still believe that Mary gets such a bad rep. Um, 
they they got over this initial drama, had a really good relationship. Though Anne did have to witness the whole like Lady Jane Grey hashtag poor baby Jane hashtag poor baby Jane. Follow us on yeah. Twitter. Shout out to our first episode. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't get to see that go down. Um, so I can only wonder at this point. She's like, man, all these heads getting lopped off. Yes, I feel like for people that have been living in England for the last fifty years. Uh, they might be kind of like used to this head choppery for someone that didn't grow up there. You might be a little bit like, <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, you know? right, right. This little girl getting her head cut off. Right. So at Mary's coronation, Anne and Elizabeth rode in on a carriage right behind Mary and they sat at the bougiest table and they had feasts and, Basically, she was once again treated like one of the higher ups in the royal family. Yeah. So I'm sure Mary kind of felt sorry for her and sympathized with her because Mary was also banished and like, yeah. So there was that commonality there. I really do think the two of them, one, they were the same age. And two, they had (laughs) both, (laughs) yeah. And two, they had both experience such similar paths because of Henry VIII. Mm -hmm. I don't see how they couldn't have found like a Yeah, like Mary had to felt sorry for her and like she felt sorry, like they felt sorry for each other. So it was like, again, a relationship built on mutual distrust. So yes, they're like, cool, Mary, you're Catholic. (laughs) Let's make England Catholic again. Mika. I think. (laughs) Mika Red Hat. Yes, absolutely. When Mary was like, England is Catholic again now. Anne was just like, "Uh, yes. I think her growing up in a place with such religious tolerance really helped her ebb and flow especially at this point yeah uh, because that was a yeah. that was a thing in england right now <laughs> religious tolerance was not tolerated in england yeah they were like mary was like we're catholic now and she's like i, that, I know catholic catholicism i know her yes mary like, full of grace our lord i got a little yes yeah let's do it let's hard catholic and Anne went so hard with Catholicism towards the end of her life. And I think that served her very, I think she was so smart. Again, she read the room. Yes. um, During Mary's reign, Anne actually tried to declare herself as Dowager Queen. And that was like right after Catherine Parr died. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, she was the only one left standing. So technically... She was a dowager queen. So but I get she was she also the king's it. sister, so... Dowager princess queen? Uh, yeah. <laughs> but somehow her application got lost in the mail? No, I never did. Yeah, it, it didn't. Yeah. It never happened. Yeah. It just didn't happen, guys. Um, I don't understand the whole process of becoming a dowager queen. It, it seems like it would just be like, hey, I was married to the king. He's dead. Yeah, it seems like Mary, (laughs) even though they were, like, close, like, specifically didn't let her become retroactively Dowager Queen. I can understand that from Mary's perspective, though, because she's already in a tumultuous... She's the first queen. She's the first queen. Let's not rock the boat any further. Yeah, let's not make a Dowager Queen. Oh, shit, then do I have to answer to my mother-in-law yeah i get it i get it a little weird a little weird so totally getting this for her it was like it's it's a hard no from everyone else too they're just like no it's too much paperwork so in 1554 mary marries huh the son (laughs) of the holy roman emperor surprise surprise not just a state of mind he's a husband now um (laughs) so Is Katie being an awkward turtle? <laughs> no, I'm being, I'm being that, you know, that gif of Homer Simpson where he just slowly backs into. <laughs> yeah. I feel that's like what Anne of Cleves did here because the Holy Roman Emperor and Cleves had been at war battling for so, so, so long now. So when Mary 
marries the son of the Holy Roman Emperor, yeah. they don't want a Cleves representative at court. So yeah, she's just Homer Simpson backing up into the bushes. She again, she is <laughs> reading the room. She's like, you know what? This is mm-hmm. not a place for me to be present. I I don't want to start any drama. And Mary was very thankful for to her for not wanting to start any shit, you know? Yes. So she wasn't at this point asked to come out at court at all. Like she really didn't show up. She still got her income. She still had a couple of castles, which hey, wish hey. I had the same. But I get the vibe that it was kind of just like, why don't you just stand home at the castle, drink your Watch some beer, Netflix, just... you know, just, then just show. I be mean, fine. I, I, I think, I think I would be fine with that. Yes. Hashtag <laughs> same. Absolutely. So that's, that's yeah. kind of what she did. Like, no. can you blame her? Like, I would stay at, at home, order a bunch of beer, and get it door dashed to my doorstep and just be like, all right, we're good. So the next year, Anne's health really took a hit. So it had actually been on a steady decline for a while. But here, we actually see, like, a major decline. Um, it's likely that she had cancer from an, in yeah. her stomach. Um, and she dealt with that for a really long time, which don't love that for her. I do not love Ugh. this journey. No, I hate that though. I love you, Anne of Cleves. She died of uh, stomach cancer. So Anne wrote up her will in which she left all her dripping and jewels of Aguanza to Mary and Elizabeth. Basically begged that her staff be paid for the rest of the year, which, oh my God. Like, I feel like that's why she gave so much of her jewels to the other powerful women and then was like, and then Take please my, make sure my staff my is, make sure they find, make sure they find great jobs or make sure they've got like a pension plan or something. I love it. It tells a lot about who she is. Right? Like, she reads yeah, the room, she I takes agree. care of everybody, and that's the reason she didn't get her head cut off. Um, yes! Th- not to say yes. that all the ones that got their head cut off had anything to say about it. <laughs> like, they had no option. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. But Anne died on July 16th, 1557, at her home at a place called Chelsea Manor. She was only 41. I know. Back then, though, that was yeah, a lot yeah. older than it is now. Oh, but I'm about to be dead. She <laughs> <laughs> she outlived all of the six wives. She um, was the only one that got to see the reign of the first actual queen of England. Das queen. Like, in her own right. She was laid to rest in Westminster Abbey. And some people like to be like, Oh, she was put somewhere that's hard to find. And it's like, all right, but she's still in Westminster Abbey. So, you know, I'm not going to be buried at Westminster yeah, Abbey. I, think, like, I, I don't think she's going to protest about this decision. She's fine with it. In the book that we read by Heather Darcy, that we um, we interviewed her, she ends the book with being like, after Anne's death, uh, Elizabeth becomes queen. And Elizabeth showed a huge amount of religious tolerance that wasn't typical of English court or European courts at the time. And I wonder who she learned that from. Right? Isn't that a fun theory that maybe she got that from her dear friend, Anne of Cleves. Agreed. So, I mean, I'm, I'm just going to, unpopular opinion, my favorite Tudor queens are definitely Catherine of Aragon and Anne of Cleves. Those two okay. are my two favorite. Katie, I already know your answer. It's Anne Boleyn. <laughs> oh, I just love her so much. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't, but I, it doesn't mean I don't love Anne of Cleves also. Yes. I can love all of them. Right? She was a smart woman that knew she could put her fingers on the pulse that a way that not all of these women could, not all of these people could, period. So let's raise a glass to Anne of Cleves. Cheers, bitches. Cheers, bitches. All right, guys, catch y'all next time. 
Thanks for listening, guys. Yeah, if you want to hear something, just email us at queenshistorypodcast at gmail.com. And follow us on social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We have a really great Facebook discussion group. We'd love to see you over there, too. And if you're so inclined, we do have a Patreon account if you need more Queen's content in your life. Yes, yes. (laughs) Thanks Thanks for listening. Cheers, bitches. Mm.